We're very happy to welcome Brian Chesky to Bloomberg. Thanks for being here, Brian. Brian, of course, is the co-founder of Airbnb. Everyone knows what Airbnb is. Thank you for inviting me here so, today. So tell me how big your company is at this point. How do you measure it, and how big is it really overall? There's probably two ways to measure it. Um, we have about 1.7 million homes around the world in 34,000 cities in 191 countries. That's all the major countries in the world except for North Korea, Iran, and Syria. That includes Cuba, which we launched in April. And we now have 2,500 homes. So that's one metric. The other is just to get a sense of how big it is every night. And this is probably the most important metric. On a peak night this past August, we had one million people from around the world coming from 180 countries in a single night staying in an Airbnb home. Never before would this have been possible for a million people from 180 countries to live together. But of course now it is. The problem with your growth strategy though is the more you grow, the more scrutiny is upon you and you've got regulators potentially knocking at your Airbnb door. How are you addressing this? The fact that those people renting out their homes are simply not paying taxes. Well, first of all, they are simply paying taxes. We are going city by city in the United States, collecting and remitting hotel tax. We collect and remit hotel tax in San Francisco, in Portland. Well, what type of hotel tax? Like hotel occupancy tax. So the same, you're paying this, they are saying the same amount of taxes oh, yes. that a Hilton would pay. Yes, exactly. And on top of that, they declare income tax because we um, issue every host a 1099 We've been doing this for about six or seven years, and we're going city by city. So our whole principle is we want to partner with cities. And the bigger we get, we know the more attention we draw from regulators. But I also think the bigger we get, the more regulators say Airbnb are partners to us. And so we have partnerships with cities all over the country and, in fact, all over the world. We passed a national housing law in France, which recognized Airbnb. We passed a law um, in the uh, United Kingdom. And city by city, I think we're starting to see a lot of movement. I actually, two days ago, was in Washington, D.C., meeting with a number of senators, educating them about our business. What I've learned is the more people learn about Airbnb, the more they love Airbnb. But it's also about us going eyes wide open in a city and knowing that we have to enrich the cities we serve and partner with them. So talk about a different form of regulation beyond tax, which yes. is zoning. Right. About whether this is really zoned as a residential property or zoned as a commercial one. Right. Uh, how, do you regulate at all how many nights a year a given residence could be let out? Our principle is this. We want to have build great relationships with landlords. And we ask all of our hosts to follow, comply with the local laws and regulations and be above board with their landlords about what they're doing. And we're actually starting to pilot some partnerships with landlords in cities around the country. So that is really what we're focused on. From a city perspective, it's really a short-term rental. So we want to make sure we collect remit hotel taxes. And we want to make sure that city by city, there is a legitimization of this activity. If it's about partnerships, why are you fighting against Prop F, which would limit the amount of nights people can rent out their homes? Because I don't think that is actually an affordable housing idea. In other words, I've had thousands of hosts that have come to me saying, if you limit me being able to stay in my home, be able to rent my Airbnb for 75 nights a year, which is what Prop F would do, I will no longer be able to keep this home. They're also saying, this, I can keep this home because I can rent my in-law unit. If with Prop F, I can no longer rent my in-law unit, I can't keep this home. I agree with the spirit, which is that we want to be regulated. To regulate Airbnb is to recognize Airbnb. But I just don't think this is a, a sensible solution Mayor Ed Lee's come out against this. Gavin Newsom's come out against this. The San Francisco Chronicle has come out against Prop F. Can we talk about safety for a moment? Yes. David no. and I are parents. And when I think about the fact that people can simply rent out their couch, young people would love to do that. If I had a, David has a daughter in college. Right. And if I had a college-aged son, which I will eventually, and they said, great, I can make a cool 100 bucks tonight renting out my couch, where are you on safety? Strangers sleeping on people's couches? Where's your responsibility lie? Well, first of all, most of the business is not people staying in couches. But it's part of your business, and it only takes one or two disastrous situations to really hurt your brand. We've had 60 million people use Airbnb. To give you an example, last year, the World Cup, 600,000 people went to the World Cup. One in five of those people, 120,000, stayed in Airbnb. We did not have any major reported incidents in the World Cup. The whole thing, when we started this company, everyone said, this is going to be crazy. This is never going to work. And I said, why? They said, people will never stay with strangers. And I said, well, what if there are no strangers? What if you got to virtually meet people before you stayed with them? So you had an identity. I have an identity. We do lots of verification checks on people. 
the whole thing works on reputation. We've had over 30 million reviews left on Airbnb properties around the world. And you can leave these reviews. We have a 250 person trust and safety team. So I think in many ways, we not only do many of the checks hotels do on guests, but we probably go in many ways further than many of the hotels do. Last June, I believe it was, you had a major infusion of capital. Right. 1.5 billion, I think, put it like a 25.5 yes. billion valuation. Yeah. Where do you stand on cash, on capitalization? At what point do you need more? And where will you look for it? We are. We have plenty of cash at this point um, to pursue like our dreams, and um, those include expanding quite aggressively around the world, including in Asia and China. So that's really what we're focused on. But we have plenty of capital, and I don't foresee a need for more capital. In the so no time. IPO right away. No initial. No plans for an IPO in the next, next couple year. Years. Next couple of years. Next couple of years. No IPO. And how is China going? China's going incredibly. I mean, it's the fastest growing market in the world. It's growing about 700 percent year over year. Let's talk about that valuation for a moment. It's clear, given that valuation, you've got a lot of money that's come in the door. There is a lot of doubt, not specifically about Airbnb, right. but about tech valuations. Right. Can you speak about Silicon Valley, your company, and do you really think you're worth that number? Well, ultimately, it's up to the investors to decide if we're worth that number, not us. I will tell you this. There's a lot of comparisons to the 2000 dot-com bubble. I think the comparisons are totally inappropriate. Wow. You had because you didn't have a lot of people online back then. You had like 60 million people or whatever it was online. You have a couple billion people online today. Those companies did not have revenue. As far as I know, most of the companies of high value since today actually have revenue. And many of these companies are growing more than 100% year over year. Valuations go up, valuations go down. The market's gonna soften for sure in the future. I'm not an economist, I'm not gonna tell you when. But you have suddenly an indus industries where in five years, you can have a business like ours. So you go from zero homes to nearly two million homes, a million people a night. There's enormous amount of equity created on our platform. But if you attribute you, the dot-com bubble to not enough people being on the internet? I attribute the dot-com bubble to huge valuations in a market that was way too early with companies that didn't have a revenue model. Are you cash now positive? Now you have. I'm sorry, I, don't, I just don't know the business well enough. Are you cash positive? We're doing really well. We don't discuss the finances, but I can tell you we don't have a need to raise more money, so that should give you a sense of yeah. what we've done. But you're profitable? We don't comment on profitability, but we're doing really well. Who, who's your competition at this point? Is it um, the hotels? Existing places? Wait, you know what? The hotels definitely think he's <laughs> their competition. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> exactly. Not all of them do. Some of them do. Some of them do. Not all of them do. I Ultimately, promise, I think they we're might here. not all admit it. They all think, you they're, think you're their competition. <laughs> I think there's a pretty big industry, so um, people have different views. Um, ultimately, I think our competition is just people not traveling. I mean, you know, give you an example. 40% of travel in the United States, people stay at friends and family. This is one of the top use cases for Airbnb. People, um, you know, stay in Airbnb twice as long as hotels. And when you stay in Airbnb, you typically stay outside of the hotel district. I think it's a different use case. And I, what I keep telling everyone inside the hospitality industry, outside the hospitality industry, they can believe me or not, is for us to win. I don't think anyone else has to lose. So there you have it. Friends and family are his main competition. It sounds I like, like that. that. Like that. In-laws are a competition. In-laws are a competition. <laughs> yes. When someone like Barry Diller goes on record this week, which he did, saying tech valuations are based on nothing, does it keep you up at night? No. We're Not doing at all. We're, Airbnb is going great, and whether we succeed or fail isn't going to become from some private valuation. It's because whether or not our community of guests and hosts around the world love our business. And if we provide amazing experience to people every single day, then we're going to be doing incredibly well, and we're growing very fast. Battling regulators is sort of Uber's biggest foe. The amount of money they have to spend courting, winning over um, this, this situation that they're in. Are you going to be the next Uber in terms of the established industry hating you? I think that um, we are very different from every other company. I never love getting bucketed into other companies. Every one of us is going to set our own path. I think that one thing that many people around the world will say is that Airbnb is a very collaborative company. That cities around the world say they like actually working with us. And I don't see us battling cities. We are a company that brings countries together, literally like the citizens. They live together every night. If a, country, if a company brings people into other people's homes, you don't want to be a brand that's fighting. For, to your safety question. So we don't want to be a company whose brand is fighting cities. We want to be a company whose brand is partnering and working with cities. And I think many cities would say that is our brand. So go out five years for Uber. Yeah. For Uber. For Airbnb. For, Airbnb. <laughs> for Airbnb. Where are you and where's your biggest growth? You mentioned China earlier. I mean, how big a market can that be for you? 
We is have, that one of your biggest opportunities? We have 1.7 million homes in Airbnb. There are somewhere between, you know, there are upwards of over 10 million hotel rooms in Airbnb. I don't know how many homes there will be, but there's no reason there can't be close to as many homes in the world on Airbnb. I think t five years from now, my hope is you can go to any city, anywhere in the world, any block, any neighborhood, and today those doors are locked to you, tomorrow they're open to you. You could have access to any place and truly feel like you live in that city like a local. Have you told the president this? You're on the president's council. I would definitely go for an Airbnb at the White House. Just saying. <laughs> you know, I'm I, just saying. I actually um, was invited uh, to the White House because I, was, um, I worked with him on entrepreneurship in Cuba. And um, when I was there, I had made sure to mention one thing to him. And that was, we need to get the Lincoln bedroom on Airbnb. Yes. And he said, I need to check with Michelle, but he told me it was a long shot. And I said, well, I'm, we need to... The we're Secret gonna... Service might have Excuse something me. to say about that. Well, we should. Sure. Yes. I've changed yes. him yes. a number. He said there was a chance. Uh, he, I think There's he was humoring chance. me. He I might have been chance. joking. I'm not sure. Might be the dumb dumber one in a million chance, but <laughs> right. still a chance. Brian, thank you so thank much. You so Brian Chesky, co-founder of Airbnb.